I'm going to show you how to value a company using a discounted cash flow model that you can do yourself. So I'm going to show you all the steps of this model. You can easily build it yourself from watching this video. And a discounted cash flow model, what that does is it estimates the future cash flows a company generates and then discounts that number back to today's value. You can use this approach with any investment and it'll work. Let's use Microsoft as an example. We need its actual free cash flows. So let's go to Yahoo Finance. You type in Microsoft, you hit financials, then you hit cash flow. Yahoo calculates the free cash flow for you. If you want to calculate it yourself, it's just cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Let's get the 2017 free cash flow, that's 31 billion. And make sure you add three zeros because everything in Yahoo is in thousands. Let's get to 2018. 2019, 38 billion. And 2020, 45 billion. We're going to estimate the future cash flows based off of the actual cash flows. The way the model calculates the 2021 free cash flow is I took the difference between 2020 and 2017. So 45 billion minus 31 billion, that's 13.8 billion. So in four years, they grew their cash flow $14 billion. So that's roughly three and a half billion dollars a year. 13.8 billion divided by four. So all I did was add 45 billion and 3.5 billion to get 48 billion. And then I just added 3.5 billion a year for the next three years. Now to calculate the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, we need their weighted average cost of capital. I just Googled Microsoft WAC and Guru Focus came up and they list the WAC for each year. In 2020, they have 5.61. So we can just put that into the model. That's how much it costs this company to obtain funding, whether through debt or equity, 5.61%. The way you calculate the terminal value, you take the 2024 free cash flow times 1 plus the perpetual growth rate, 2.5%, divided by the WAC minus the growth rate. Most models use between 2 and 2.5% 2 and for the growth rate. This is more about inflation growth, not so much the company growth. The growth of the company is built into the free cash flow. So if you felt Microsoft was going to have more growth in the future than it did in the past, you can increase these numbers to reflect that. Or if you felt they're going to have less growth, you can decrease these numbers to reflect that. But you have to present value these numbers back to today's dollars. You have to calculate the discount factor for each year. So for 2021, that's one year into the future. So the discount factor is 1 plus the WAC raised to the first power, so that's 1.056. 2022, it's 1 plus the WAC raised to the second power because it's a second year out. 2023 is a third year out, so it's raised to the third power. 2024 is raised to the fourth power. The discount factor for the terminal value is the same as the 2024 discount factor. And then all you do is take the estimated cash flow, the 48.7 billion divided by 1.056. So $48 billion one year from now is worth $46 billion today. Do the same thing for 2022, 23, 24 in a terminal value. You discount them back to today's dollars. When you sum up these numbers, we get a value of Microsoft of $1.75 trillion. The next thing we need is the market cap for Microsoft. Let's go back to Yahoo Finance. So the market cap is $1.732 trillion. Now we need to know the shares outstanding for Microsoft. So the way we figure that out is we take the market cap divided by what they're trading at. Let's see what they're trading at. 228.91. 
So let's put that in. So that means they have 7.5 billion shares outstanding. So the present value of the future cash flows is $1.75 trillion. We divide that by 7.5 billion shares and we get a calculated stock price of 232. Microsoft is trading almost exactly what we calculate, but this isn't always gonna be the case. Sometimes you'll calculate a value much higher or much lower than what they're trading at. If you calculate a stock price much higher than they're trading at, that may be an indication you want to buy the stock, or it could be an indication you wanna do more research on the company to figure out if you wanna buy the stock. Now this will only work on companies that have positive free cash flow because if a company has negative free cash flow, calculated stock price will come out negative and that's impossible to have a negative stock price. If Microsoft had 45 billion of free cash flow in 2017 and 31 billion in 2020, then this would say negative 3 billion. So each year their free cash flow would be decreasing according to the model. It is possible a company has low cash flows in 2020 because they're investing a lot in their business and that's gonna generate higher cash flows in the future. You just have to look into these types of things and the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. Let me know if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll definitely answer. If you wanna see me do discounted cash flow models in other companies, then subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.